Would you like the records printed or viewed as a PDF? PDF, please. But hurry, Miles. Getting too risky. We'll have to come back. No, I'm not leaving without proof Dad is innocent. Ah, huh, here you go, sir. It was buried deep. Okay. <gasps> Wait! Miles, please erase the database from the time I returned home until I leave today. Keep no record of this visit. What visit, sir? <laughs> I can't believe Stone destroyed my father's reputation. And because of him, I never got to know my dad. Well, now, this is gonna take him down. There, there, Pumpkin. Adrian, get him some nice hot tea. It'll calm her rattle nerves right up. Kim, please. Sorry, I was still in character. Look, I don't get it. Why would Stone have no regrets plants a bomb and point the finger at a bunch of protesters? For sympathy? Makes him look like a victim. Or as a distraction. From what? Maybe it has something to do with what we found. After the surprise and results from our H2O challenge, where stone water and tap water finished an attack, we conducted a chemical evaluation on both waters. Using electrochemical analysis, we tested for levels of calcium, sodium, potassium, iron, sulfates, chloride, nitrate. You get the idea. Each body of water has its own unique chemical makeup, depending on where it comes from. Think of it as the water's very own unique fingerprint. And what we found is, well, see for yourselves. Maywood Glen water versus stone bottled water. Wait, so what's the difference? Nada. They're exactly the same. Stone water is Maywood Glen water. How can that be true? Only one way to find out. Look for the source. Cam, when I was in Internet Space Inc., weren't they studying the effects of the drought on Maywood Glen's underground water? Right. May I? They're using satellite radar to measure underground water levels. The yellow is Maywood Glen's aquifer, its groundwater supply. The purple shows where the levels have been depleted. You can see it's been pumped and it's low. The blue shows the flow of the aquifer. Well, I'll be darned. The main artery of water runs right through Farmer Adele's land. And directly under Stone Acres. And it's where the groundwater is most depleted. Could Stone be stealing water? Contributing to the drought? Farmer Adele mentioned construction trucks coming and going from Stone Acres at all hours of the day and night. But the construction is complete. There's no reason for trucks. Except maybe to transport water. I think it's time we pay those old truckers a friendly visit to check out just what they're really hauling. See you all here today. Good morning. My name is Dr. Allison Crawford. I'm the director here at Space Inc. It is my great honor to welcome you all to the Destination Mars Camp. Each of you has been selected from hundreds of applicants for your intelligence as well as your creative instincts. Your submissions showed ingenuity and forward thinking as applied to future exploration and life on the planet Mars. My submission is a Mars lamp. While growing vegetables on Mars with soil from Earth, microorganisms in the dirt called geobacters generate electrons. The energy can then be stored into small batteries. <laughs> mm. So, congratulations. I've created a robot to work on the Mars surface. I call it my voice command hydraulic based space robot sustainable on Mars atmosphere. <laughs> Break it down. Now, who wants to see the space 
Station Simulator. <gasps> Over the next four days, you will train for a simulated shuttle launch, travel on the space station, and live on Mars in our deep space habitat geolab, or HAB for short. A mission that would ordinarily take nine months. Oh, this place is awesome. Did you see that deep space glove box? They use it to study samples collected during spacewalks. I mean, <laughs> how about that trash to gas reactor developed to recycle in deep space and convert it to methane and other gases? I think I'm dreaming. Well, I must be dreaming too because there's no way little Cameron Coyle belongs here. For reals. The good news. Who's that? Justin's brother Zach. One year older and ten times more irritating. Now. Straight from the International Space Station, currently traveling 220 miles above the Earth, I give you Destination Mars Camp graduate, flight engineer, Chris Bryant. Welcome, trainees, and congratulations. Your acceptance into the DM program is quite an accomplishment. And I should know, I attended Destination Mars Camp, and now I'm here floating in micro G. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I can't believe that. Amazing. That's so awesome. Oh, that's so cool. I, I need to try that. That's... But I'm here to tell you, this is no summer fun camp. This program will be challenging, so stay on your game. In space, things go wrong, but it will be your job to work together to solve problems as they arise. Because on Mars, your life and those of your fellow astronauts depend upon it. So, for your first question, who can tell me what the Mars atmosphere is made of? Well, then I hope next time we speak, one of you will have the answer. Until then. Hey, uh, Devin, um, I don't have you down here for an audition. Because I'm not. I'm just doing a favor for Bree and Pam. I got these color filters for your light show. Trust me, you'll like it. Do we have a choice? Nope. Uh, it's Brian Cam. She does not care. Yeah, she still calls me Lyle. Yeah. Anyway, good luck. Yo, Camsterdam. Congrats on, if you're lucky, second place. <laughs> well, you know what else is number two, Justin? Yeah, let's not go there. He's just trying to get in your head. Well, it's working. He's in there. This is my one shot to make an impression on Simon Temple. What if he doesn't like what I've created? Are you kidding? Simon's gonna flip when he sees how insanely talented you are. Plus, with my EDM beats, we're gonna crush it. Circuit beats, you're up. <sighs> Let's do this. Go, girl! Yeah! Yeah! Double.